Okay, so we have the continuous function f, defined on the interval from negative 5 to 8. It's made up of these four line segments connected at these points as shown. And g is going to be the function represented by this equation. So we're going to find g of 0 and g of negative 5. So for g of 0, that will be equal to 2 times 0 plus the integral from negative 2 to 0 of f of t dt. 2 times 0 is just 0, so we're going to have 0 plus whatever this is. Now this integral is just going to represent the area bounded by this graph from negative 2 to 0. So we're trying to find the area from here to here, essentially, for this, this thing, this region. And we're just going to use some geometry to break it into like a rectangle and a triangle. This rectangle here is an area of 2. And this triangle up here is an area of, th of 1. So it'll be 1 plus 2, so which is 3. This, so this will be 3. G of 0 will be equal to 3. Now for g of negative 5, that would be 2 times negative 5 plus the integral from negative 2 to negative 5 of f of t dt. So 2 times negative 5, negative 10, plus this. So now we're going to essentially, again, find the area bounded by this function from negative 2 to negative 5, but since the, since the endpoints are, you know, in reverse, whatever we get, we're going to multiply by negative 1. So the negative 10 plus negative 1 times whatever this area will be. So we're going to look from negative 2, so from here to here. So we're going to try to find this. We want to find the area of this triangle and then this, you know, this clear triangle here. So this triangle right here would be um, an area of 1. Now, this triangle has a height or a length of 4 with a 2. So it would be um, an area of 4. But since it's below the x-axis, we're going to treat it as, negative, as a negative quantity, negative 4. So, from negative 5 to negative 2, we'll have negative 4 plus 1, or negative 3, as the value of the ending row. So we'll have negative 10 plus negative 1 times negative 3, so negative 10 plus 3, and we'll get negative 7 as our answer. Okay, part B, find g prime of x in terms of f of x for each of g double prime of 4 and g double prime of negative 2, find the value or state that it does not exist. Okay, so g prime of x will be the derivative of this. So the derivative of 2x is it's going to be 2. And if we were to differentiate an integral, it's essentially like canceling out the integration process. Think of it differentiation, integration as inverse operations. So this oh, this whole thing just goes away. So it's just plus f of x. Just, just becomes whatever that function is. So that'll be your general equation for g prime of x. Now if we want to find g double prime of 4, we'll have g Let's first find g double prime of x. g double prime of x will be the derivative of this. The derivative of 2 is just 0 since it's just a constant. So g double prime of x is just f prime of x in general. So if we want to find g double prime of 4, that's just essentially finding f prime of 4. Now, f prime of 4 is just going to be the derivative of this graph at x equals 4. So let's put a 4. 4 is over here. 
Now, remember, let's remember what the derivative is. The derivative is just the slope of the tangent line to the function at a point. And since this is a straight line, it's just going to be the slope of this straight line. It looks like we go from 2, negative 3, go down 3, over 3, so it's just negative 1. Slope here will be negative 1. Now, if we want to find the second derivative of g at negative 2, so g double prime of negative 2 is just going to be f prime of negative 2. So we again look at the graph where x is negative 2, and the derivative, geometrically speaking, you know, would be undefined here because we have a because the left hand graph doesn't um, match up with the slope of the of the um, right hand side. It basically like we call it like a sharp peak or a point. Like it's, um, it would not it would not have a continuous derivative here. It would not be defined there. So it does it would not does not exist. It does not exist at D and E at this point. Part C. On what intervals, if any, is the graph of G concave down? So for a graph to be for the graph to be concave down, you want to find where the second derivative is negative. So I'm going to put the answer up here. So you so remember the second derivative tells you about concavity, and so we want to find where is G double prime of x less than zero. When's the second derivative negative? So let's remember that g double prime of x is just f prime of x. We want to find where f prime of x is less than zero. And f prime of x is just the slope of this graph. So we just want to find where the slopes are negative in this graph. So, you know, starting from here to here, from here to here, it's positive. But from from negative two to zero, we have a negative slope line. So we would first put an f from negative two to zero. That'll be one interval. It from here to here is positive. The slope is positive, and then from here all the way to the end. So from two to eight. it would be negative as well. So it would, we would have this interval, and you could say, you know, because, because f prime of x is less than zero on these intervals. And the last part, function h is given by h of x as being equal to g of x cubed plus 1, find h prime of 1. Alright, first let's um, just figure out what the general equation for h prime would be. So h prime of x, we would take the derivative of this, and for this we just need to use chain rule. So take the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of x cubed plus 1 is going to be 3x squared. And that's going to be multiplied by g prime of x cubed plus 1. And so if we want to find h prime of 1, we're just going to evaluate this expression for 1. So h prime of 1 will be equal to 3 times 1 times g prime of 1 cubed or 1 plus 1 so times g prime of 2 so this will be equal to 3 times so we need to find what g prime of 2 is so going back to this 
g prime of x is equal to 2 plus f of x. So g prime of 2 will just be 2 plus f of 2. So we'll just have 3 times 2 plus f of 2. And then we just flip what f of 2 is. Come back to our graph. f of 2 with just the coordinates, the y coordinate at, at this point. So f of 2 is equal to 3. And so then this will be equal to 3 times 2 plus 3, or 3 times 5, or just 15. And that will be our answer.